Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Guardians of adults with disabilities, along with those they care for, are protesting in the Parliament to demand an increase in the social pension to the level of the lowest national monthly salary. The social pension is indexed annually and as of the 1st of March this year it has increased to 1,588 złoty and 44 grosz. They protested in 2014, then again in 2018. Yesterday they resumed their protest. The talk is of people with disabilities and their caregivers. This is a citizen's project and it should be resolved here and now. Nearly 200,000 signatures have been attached to the civic draft, which a member of the civic coalition submitted to the parliament today. The protesters are anxious to have the draft processed while the same is still in session. I have in my hand here 1,217 zwoty in a pouch. I ask myself, who among you would like to swap this money, which is for a disabled, incapacitated person to live, for a month? The government of law and justice has raised the social pension, which is now 100% of the pension for total incapacity, which is the minimum pension. This is the amount of 1,588 zwoty. This pension is being indexed. Protest are demanding an increase in the amount of the social pension for adults with disabilities to the level of the minimum wage, which is 3,490 zwoty. People with disabilities, their families, their caregivers, this is one of those groups excluded by the rule of law and justice, the united right. This amount of money collected by people with disabilities who are fighting for an increase in social pensions is the kind of money that deprives a person of any sense of dignity. At the moment, the social pension is 1,588 zwoty, and in 2015 it was 739 zwoty. The reason I'm talking about these figures is in the context of the debate that is going on now. It's not that nothing has happened in recent years. We are working on the situation of people with disabilities. The Solidarity Fund was established in 2018 to provide comprehensive support to people with disabilities, pensioners and retirees. The Parliament building is a place for any dialogue, every kind of dialogue, but it seems to me that this formula is unnecessary. There are more than three million people in Poland who have a legal confirmation of disability. However, according to estimates by the Ministry of the Family, in reality this could be between four and seven million Poles. The change in policy in these two terms, and in the last term as well, is unequivocal, and I think that this team and the United Right have made a profound reorientation in a pro-social, pro-family direction, and also with the disabled in mind. While it is true, and we do not hide this, that we are aware that there are still places and such addresses where this help should be greater. In 2022, the government has allocated 37 billion zwoty to support people with disabilities. Russian troops have been trying to occupy Bakhmut in the Donetsk region since August 2022. The heaviest and bloodiest military operations in Russia's war with Ukraine are currently underway there. Authorities in Kiev report that the situation in the city is increasingly difficult, but it is still under the control of the Ukrainian army. The evacuation of the last residents of Bakhmut, who have refused to leave for months, is underway. Our special correspondent, Vitol Nevelich, is on the scene. <laughs> Another day of war in Ukraine is passing under the sign of anti-aircraft alerts. Ukrainian early warning systems have detected Russian aircraft capable of carrying Kinjal missiles drifting into the air. Unfortunately, they are impossible for Ukrainian anti-aircraft defenses to combat. The Ukrainian public is in shock after footage of the execution of a Ukrainian soldier was released online yesterday. In a speech yesterday, President Zelensky himself referred to it, saying that Russians kill Ukrainians simply because they are Ukrainians. In Chasiv Yar, which separates less than a few kilometers from Bakhmut, the heaviest fighting is taking place there at the moment. The defenders of Bakhmut are not abandoning their positions. Ukraine's general staff has reaffirmed that it will hold the city for as long as possible. This makes sense since Russian soldiers are there now in very, very large numbers. The ratio of losses is 5 to 1. Of course, the Ukrainians are also losing men and equipment. But from a strategic point of view, it apparently pays off for the Ukraine command.
More and more people are deciding to evacuate. At the moment, residents of Bakhmut, who left at the last minute, are gathered, waiting for transport to areas free from such constant and frequent explosions. The situation in the frontline areas for the civilian population is slowly becoming a nightmare. This is what is happening in Kherson, as the Russians are on the other side of the Dnieper and shelling the city constantly. Four people were killed there last night. Ukrainian authorities are asking the residents of Kherson to leave the city. President Andrzej Duda said after his meeting with the UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan that he had discussed support for Ukraine. This is the second day of Duda's visit to the UAE. The main topic of the talks will be cooperation in the field of energy, both conventional and renewables. I hope that this visit will result in many contracts that will be concluded here in the future by Polish companies, but above all with an increased Polish presence here in the technological sector of renewable energy sources, IT cooperation, which is developing here in extremely dynamic ways. And this is at the moment one of the most developed and strongest regions in the world in this regard in general. And in turn, we hope that investment funds from the United Arab Emirates will come to us. The prospects are very high. The president has preliminarily signaled sending such a working group to our country precisely to discuss prospects for business cooperation. Today our economic turnover here with the United Arab Emirates is about $1.4 billion. I hope it can be increased many times over the next few years, and this is what we agreed with the president today, that we will work together in this direction. Earlier today, thousands of protesters marched in Paris as trade unions stepped up their campaign to force a policy U-turn by the government on pension reform, including raising the retirement age from 62 to 64. Demonstrators marched with banners, flags and placards denouncing what they say is the refusal to listen on the government's part. President Macron's proposal to make people work longer is deeply unpopular among the wider public opinion polls show. Street protests took place in more than 300 towns and cities. France's leading trade unions have so far acted with ray unity, but the coming days and weeks will be a test of their ability to maintain that united front. It is a democratic problem. It is a problem of respect for the people on the part of the president of France. He has said repeatedly, I have changed, I listen. I think that we make enough noise even if he has often been abroad on the days of protest, of mobilization. I think he's in France today. He knows what is happening in the country. So either he listens and he is the president of all French people, or he has decided to make it a personal matter. And then it is serious. Then it is serious. I'm here to express my discontent because personally I'm self-employed and I won't have a big pension, but I'm doing this for my children because I believe that the way this is done is not OK. They didn't explain. Maybe they had interesting arguments, but they didn't explain things. And I find that there is real disregard so we need to make a point. It is about our children, our grandchildren. I mean, imagine how it will be in 50 years if we reduce the few rights that employees have for the benefit of the corporations that earn intolerable profits without being taxed, of course. Well, we all have the hope that this will change something today. And then I think people are relatively angry and I hope that we will be able to make ourselves heard because I think the government is not listening and has put on the earplugs for some time. We also need this kind of rally to work on a national scale because people have been taken to the streets on several occasions and I think people in general have had enough. This is a critical time for the government which is hoping the reform will be adopted by Parliament later this month. Looking to pile pressure on lawmakers not to raise the pension age by two years to 64, France's more hardline unions said that they would be rolling strikes this time, which could go on for days, including oil refineries and the railways. The government insists its reform plan is essential to ensure the pension system does not go bust. While Macron's camp does not have an absolute majority in Parliament, it can count on the support of at least part of the Conservative Les Républicains party. Even so, the legislation is having a bumpy path through Parliament and Macron and his government may yet be forced to use special constitutional powers to bypass a parliamentary vote. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland daily business and more programmes. But from me, have a good night and a better tomorrow.